Hi folks, Bob from Fusion again. Today we're going to just go over a quick cleaning of your 1911. Um, basically you're going to field strip the pistol um, and then clean the barrel, clean the bushing, all those things that are inside the top end, wipe down the, the bottom end and, and oil a few points. Um, what we'll do is, we'll, if you need to understand field stripping, please look at our field stri stripping video. We do have one of those um, up in, uh, and you can look at that, see how uh, to actually take the top end apart. So I'll go pretty fast with that, skip over the, the field stripping and right to the cleaning. Um, what am I using today? I'm using Hoppy's products. Uh, Hoppy's doesn't sponsor us or anything like that. It's just I've been using Hoppy's products for 30 plus years and it's just worked well for me and, and I know there's a lot of different types of cleaning um, equipment out there and oils uh, you know that's your own preference of what you really like but it, this has been simple basic and really works well for me so I, I use mostly uh, the Hoppy's products for the most part okay so what we're going to do I'm going to strip this top end off why do I strip the top end off uh, again, first, safety, make sure the gun's unloaded. You always want to do that. Make sure no magazine, gun is unloaded. Check that. Why do I field strip the top end? Well, if you just rack back the slide and start doing your cleaning procedure, what's happening? You're dumping all the powder fouling and debris from the barrel right back into the, into the gun itself. So all that's washing right down into your trigger mechanism and all that. So I really don't care to do it that way. I like to field strip the pistol. So we'll get this top end off. Spring out. Pushing, just make sure the lug, lug is in the right position. Link pin down, pull the hole off the front. I usually pull it right off that way with the barrel bushing and everything right on the barrel. So they can pull it right off. Simple as that. So what I'm going to do when I go to clean clean my pistol, first thing I'm going to do again is inspect the breech face, look at the extractor, make sure that doesn't look like it's beat up at all. Check on the inside here. Uh, a lot of people use a swab, go down in here, clean this all out. I usually just take a rag, wipe everything out, make sure there's no debris left in there. If you have an air hose, it's good to blow it out. And that all looks good. So I come to my barrel. I'll, I'll go through here also and wipe down all the other little parts I have here. Wipe down the barrel bushing, clean that OD and ID out. My end cap. Clean that out, make sure it's not packed with all types of garbage down in there. Just wipe off the spring, wipe off the slide stop pin and slide stop. Okay, I'm also going to look at the frame, look at the feed ramp. I usually wipe the feed ramp clean. The frame dust cover up here, I'll wipe that all out with any of the fouling debris that's in there. Now, there is some other products that you can use to spray down inside and you know, a lot of the gunk will run out. Um, also, I, I watch what type of oils I'm using. I, I like the Hoppies because I haven't had problems with it, uh, gelling and, and debris getting caught in it. Um, some of the um, PTFE, Teflon-based products, I've seen, I've been, you know, a guy will bring his gun in here and he's having issues with it, take it apart, and it's all, there's all types of debris, powder fouling, leaves, you know, wherever he's been hunting with it or whatever out in the woods all down inside all the mechanisms down here and that's causing havoc with the with the action so again that's something i i don't really recommend a lot of those uh teflon based products in that um so what i'll do first you know your kit will come uh, cleaning average cleaning kit's going to come with a rod it's going to come with a brush cleaning brush it's also going to become come with a patch holder so first thing i'm going to do we'll use the brush Screw that on. And then you'll also notice on the, on the cleaning rod, this spins. The rod spins free of the handle. Why? So that while you're cleaning, all right, this will follow the rifling of the, of the barrel. So again, that'll follow the rifling of the barrel while you're cleaning it. So again, you don't really want to hold on to the rod like this. You want to hold on to the handle like this, in and out. 
That way you know this is following the rifling and doing its job cleaning out the cleaning out the bore. So a lot of the newer kits, there's just a little clam pack that you get. A lot of the older Hoppies kits or some of the like the deluxe kits, you'll get some trays, and those trays are nice to have. Um, I know some people just say, well, we'll take the brush and just dunk it in the bottle. I don't really like doing that also because uh, what happens is the debris from your brush, all the powder fouling, lead, copper, whatever now is getting down into your cleaning solvent and contaminating your cleaning solvent. So generally, what, what there used to come a little tiny, uh, a little tiny uh, bin, and what I, what you do is just pour a little bit in the bin, circulate your brush in there with the cleaning solvent, and then I usually go from the from the breech side, the muzzle, or the the chamber side out, okay, and then just again in and out. Uh, you might do this four or five times, six times. You can examine your bore and see how clean it's getting. But again, it's real simple. You can look down, see how clean it looks, shiny. Looks good. You got most of your lead out, powder fouling and that. So the next step, what I'm going to do, well, this, let's, let's get rid of this brush. Take that off. We'll put the patch tip on here. And there's a couple different varieties of, of patch tips. This is an eyelet style that you can just put the patch right through. There's other ones that actually, uh, uh, you know, they look like a little beer barrel on the end and you just, you just put it on the, you just stake the patch on the end of it. Um, so again, what I normally do with this, we'll put it through the eyelet, pull it through so it's basically like halfway. I'll put a little bit more solvent on it, on my first patch, and I'll go through with that back and forth. Now you're going to find that the patch usually doesn't have enough resistance to really follow the rifling very well. Um, your brush will definitely have enough resistance to follow the rifling. So then once I'm done with that, we'll pull this patch off the eyelet. Another clean patch. And then I usually run, run a dry patch. I usually run a dry patch take all the solvent out of there just like that looks good pull the dry patch off then I'm going to do is one more patch and this one I'm going to put a little oil a couple drops of oil on the edges of the patch and then I'm going to run that through. You don't have to sop it with oil, just a little bit, a couple drops, back and forth. Spin it, I usually spin it in the chamber a little bit, back and forth and you're done. And I'll check the bore, everything looks nice. I check the chamber while I'm doing this, everything looks nice. My feed ramp area looks good. I look at the back of the barrel edges here, there's usually a little chamfer on the back of the barrel edges. Make sure those look good, they're not dinged up or anything like that, that can impede your feeding. So that looks all good. So now I'll just wipe it clean again, put it down here with all the rest of the parts that I have. Next step, I'm going to take the, the slide back and again, check it again, make sure my breech face is clean. Now you can use the brush. Uh, you can use the brush on the clean rod if you want and just and just hit the breech face slightly if it's if you got a lot of debris on there. Uh, depending on what type of ammo you've been shooting, a lot of times you get a heavy waxy residue around the breech face, things of that nature. Um, so there is other brushes that you can buy to clean the breech face better, um, but this will work also in the kit. I just take it and rub that slightly. In the, in the breech face, make sure it's clean, and then again, wipe that out. Okay, so that's pretty much it, you know, other than I'm going to look for any debris in the rails, clean that out. Old toothbrush works great, you can get in there in the rail, scrub that out, get everything out of the, um, the rail section. Even if you have uh, anything in your locking lugs, you can take a you can take a brush or a toothbrush and go down there and just go up and down like this into the locking lugs and that will also clean that area out decent too.
And at that time, I also inspect, I'll look at the sights. Are my sights loose? Anything going on here? All right, all looks good. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna put a little oil, start with the barrel and the slide. And I just usually put a little bit just on the edge, and then I just rub it down in there with my finger. And I like doing that, not just to make my hands dirty, my hands are always dirty, but I do this because I can feel, I can feel if there's any burrs, uh, I've kicked up a burr on my rail, something's going on in there, I can actually feel what's going on. You know, the disconnector track here on the bottom of the slide, do I have any uh, rough road on that that I need to smooth down and, and look at with a stone? Nope, all looks good. Okay, so you got a little oil on the inside. Now I'll take the barrel, same thing, a couple little drops, and then I'm just gonna smooth it. Put it around the barrel. Now, this is one of our Freedom Series reactions. Um, our barrels in the Freedom Series, they're all chrome, hard chrome, HD chrome. So, it doesn't, you know, rust doesn't generally happen unless you're in a real corrosive environment. So, but when you have a standard carbon barrel or something, it's something you've got to keep maintenance on or you're going to start seeing rusting on your barrel. Um, so again, I'll just a little bit of oil. Then I'm going to link down in the down position. Barrel back in, up into locking lugs. Looks good. Okay, now, now it's time for the bushing. So I'm going to take Mr. Bushing here, put a couple drops on the OD and ID. I usually just put a few drops right around the lug, put it right around the outside. Then align my lug to the window, barrel in, turn my bushing bushing in and turn my bushing clockwise so I'm, I'm at the ready position to get the guide rod in. So now I'm going to take the guide rod and spring and again this I've already looked at, looked at everything on here. Again look at your guide rod, make sure you're not getting uh, uh, burrs picked up from the link on your guide rod. That's a common thing I see on, on a lot of commanders and things of that nature. So if that's the case you can put a little clearance on the back of the guide rod for that. Also look around the edges to see if you have any rough edges or dings and dents on the, on the guide rod. I like to keep that smooth. Um, you know, you, even in the lighter calibers, you cannot have a lot of resistance on the slide. And if you have issues with the guide rod, with the link hitting the guide rod, or, or anything's going on on the outside here, and it's, it's dragging heavy in the gun, uh, or binding in there, um, it's only going to put more resistance on your slide causing uh, feeding issues, failure, failure to feed, reject, those type of things. So uh, look at the guide rod, I always inspect the guide rod. A lot of people don't ever think of the guide rod as issues, but it's a culprit a lot of times, so one thing to look at. So now I'm just gonna put the guide rod and spring back in. Put the link back up. Okay. And then at this point, I might put a drop of oil on both sides of the rails, and that's it right now. And I'm gonna put the slide aside. Okay, eventually, guys, we'll get into stripping down the whole entire frame, stripping down the entire top end. But right now, we're just doing a generic cleaning. So again, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna look down inside my magwell area. If there's a lot of debris down in there, again, and then just, you can take your brush. You can also take a, a patch run that down in here and just make sure you kick all that dirt out of there. Again, some people will use uh, uh, different types of spray cleaners to spray down in there and run everything out. Uh, that, that does also work well too at times. Um, at this point, what I'll do now, again, I'll just put another drop here on the rails. I'll put another drop in the hole for the slide stop pin. And then I generally just put a drop down on the hammer and sear area there. That's it. And then I'll just work this back and forth. You'll see I have my hand on the grip safety. I have a, my thumb against the hammer and I'm slowly relaxing the hammer and slowly cocking the hammer back and forth just to work it a little bit, work the oil down into the system. And again, we'll, we'll, we'll do another video of stripping the whole lower down uh, if you want to get that detailed. And again at this point I'm going to look at my feed ramp area make sure I don't have any issues with my feed ramp. Everything else looks pretty good in here. Excellent. Alright. 
So now I'm going to put the top end back on. I got a few drops of oil. And slide that on. And bring it to the position where my link is. I got a bunch of oil on the hole, so it's hard to see. There we go. I use a scribe a lot of times to reassemble, help line the link, everything else. Uh, you can put some oil on the slide stop if you wish, on the pin and that. There's sufficient enough on this already. Now I'm going to put that into the link hole. I'm going to bring this back again to the, to the window. And then I usually, again, use my scribe. I take a scribe, pull back on the detent, then push the slide stop in. Save you from having all the idiot marks up and down, scratching your, scratching your frame all up. Okay, so next, what am I going to do? End cap. Again, I've already inspected the end cap. Look inside, make sure there's no debris inside. Wipe it off. A little drop of oil on the end cap. Rub it around the part. Put the end cap back on the spring. Recoil spring. Down into the, the dust cover of the slide. Next, barrel bushing wrench. Some, some people will just turn it by hand, depends on your gun, how tight the bushing is, and then turn the bushing back over top of the guide rod end cap. Then I usually push the end cap up and down, make sure it's free, make sure it's not binding anywhere, everything looks good. Again, make sure it's pointed away from your face. You don't want to get, you don't want to release that by accident and get, get, get slapped in the face with your uh, end cap seen that happen quite a few times. Then I'm going to rack the gun back and forth, make sure I have no binding. I'm going to do a quick test, let the slide slam forward, make sure you don't have hammer fall. I'm going to pull back and hold the trigger in place. I'm going to do it again, holding the disconnector in position, make sure you do not have hammer fall. And I know a lot of people will be like, oh my gosh, you're going to ruin your action. No, you're not, okay? Do not worry about that. That's a total fallacy. So again, I'm holding back on the disconnector and making sure you have no hammer fall. Okay, just quick, simple safety procedures. Again, what am I going to do at this point? I'm going to check my thumb safety. Okay, grab the, the beaver tail safety, the grip safety. Make sure it doesn't fire. Pull down on that. Don't touch anything here. Leave your beaver tail and your grip safety in the in the uh, upward position. Thumb safety's down. Make sure the gun doesn't fire. Again, now you know all your safeties are working. Great. Okay, she's ready to go. After that, a few things. What I normally do after that is that I'll pull it back. I'll run a couple more drops of oil down the rails. Rack the slide back and forth. Make sure that's all good. And then again, I'm going to take a, a micro cloth uh, fiber or a rag, soft rag, a little bit of oil, and then wipe down the entire pistol. Okay. Depending on the finish you have, you know you might you might need not need as much oil. Black oxide pistols, you're going to want a little bit of oil on the outside just to protect things. Even stainless, 400 series stainless will rust also, so you want to put a little oil on it. Just because you have a stainless gun, do not think it's not going to rust. So again, I'm going to make sure everything's oiled up halfway decent. And that's it. You're ready to put her back to bed until you go out and shoot again. All right, guys, have a great day. Thanks a lot for watching.